All right, guys, welcome to your Microsoft Word uh, 2019 certification review. And uh, just like in our last review, I went ahead and organized everything into folders for us. Today, we're going to be working out of this folder right here, and I gave everybody access to it that's in this course today. So Microsoft Access or Microsoft uh, 2019 Word uh, certification review, and you'll see uh, Project 1, okay? And uh, this is where we're going to start. And go ahead and open up this document and download it for me. I don't know why I have all these open. Let me go ahead and close all these out. Um, and just so you know, in our folder there, also the practice questions that I'm going to go through with you are right here. If you haven't downloaded those, go ahead and open those up or just keep them open in Office 365, which is this right here. So when we're uh, discussing Office 365, you know I'm um, talking about the online version of Office. And when I say download the document and open it up, it's going to open up in the um, 2019 version of Microsoft Office. All right. So this is the 2019 version of Microsoft Office. And when you download that document in Project One, this is what we're looking at. And let's just go ahead and get into it. And um, let's go ahead and read off question one here. <clears throat> it says, sort the table by division in ascending order. All right, sort the table by division in ascending order right here, number one. And what I did was I gave you the questions and I gave you step-by-step -step instructions on how to solve each one of those questions. Uh, and just a little shout out, um, most of the files and a lot of the questions that I got here came from Mike's office on YouTube. All right, so uh, he has a great review for Microsoft Office 2016. And what I did was I took all of his stuff and all of his files, and I just kind of updated it for 2019 um, for my students because we do test in 2019, and obviously you are as well, or you wouldn't be here. Um, so hopefully Mike's Office, you know, gets a nice review for 2019. In the meantime, uh, this is what I had to make happen, you know, kind of myself. So shout out to Mike's Office for all these files. Uh, feel free, Mike's office, if you see this, steal my stuff as well. If you need any files, just let me know. Um, so, um, let's just go ahead and get right to it. If you haven't downloaded that document, download it. And this is what we're looking at. We're looking for this table right here. And when you click in a table, just like in Microsoft Word, you get something called Table Tools Contextual Tabs, and you get a Design Tab and a Layout Tab. All right, and we're going to say Sort. It's going to go ahead and automatically select the whole table. If you ever do want to select an entire table, you can click on the four pronged arrow like this to select the table first, but you don't really have to. And then you can click on sort. Make sure it says division. You'll notice here that it automatically picks up everything that's designated as a heading style in the table. And this is your header row. This top row right here is called your header row. And if you ever want to select just your header row, you can hover off to the side of the table and you can select an entire row or hover off to the top of your table. And when the cursor turns to a downward facing arrow, you can select an entire column. And of course, you can just click and drag inside the column as well. You know, sometimes I'm a little worried about that because uh, I'm always worried about missing something that I should have selected. All right, so with the entire table selected, I'm going to say division, ascending order, and then say OK. And it's just going to go ahead and alphabetize all of my stuff. All right, so now I'm in kind of ABC order. Um, all right, so make the headings of the division table repeat onto the second page. So notice right here how I have headings, and when I scroll to the second page, they're not here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the header row here, and I'm going to go to the Table Tools Layout tab, and I'm going to say Repeat Header Rows. And notice how now I, my header row for my table is now repeated onto my second page. All right? On page two, and I know I'm going really fast here, you guys can pause me as you need to. I'm just trying to do that because the upload time can be kind of long for these things. On page two, create a table from the text Ontario to Oshawa. Um, so right here, Ontario to Oshawa. I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to go to the insert tab. And let me finish reading the question too. I'm going a little too fast, I guess. Uh, create a table from the text, Ontario to Oshawa. And I'm probably miss, I don't know where that is. I, I, I don't know where it is. So I'm probably mispronouncing it. Create a table that is separated by tabs and spread across the width of the window. All right. So a couple different options that we could do here when we're, when we're inserting this table. So we're going to go um, select our text. We're going to go to the insert tab. Um, we're going to say 
insert and then we're going to say table all right and then we're going to say insert table uh, i'm sorry convert text to table not insert table you know what you could probably do insert table too we'll try both ways here in just a minute but i want to show you the right way to do it first um with this little convert text to table window open notice how it automatically says it's going to have three columns four rows that's fine um, it says auto fit to window so we're going to say right here auto fit to window and it says separated tabs it's already selected at separated tabs if you notice here the uh, actual text itself is separated with like a tab key there's like about five spaces between these letters here that's what they did um, so that's why we're, we're creating a table and every time it separates a tab at a tab we're going to create a cell or a new column or a row and that's basically what we're saying all right so click OK and it's going to basically create a table that spreads across the entire page all right the other thing that they might ask you to do and um i haven't seen this yet but just in case is they might actually might ask you to insert a table and they might act oof, i didn't mean to do that there they might ask you to insert a table and say convert text to table and say auto fit contents and what this does is it gives the table just enough room to um, create uh, cells for the contents that you have selected so it doesn't spread it across the whole page all right but this question in particular says it wants us to go ahead and insert a table and it wants it to spread across the entire page which means um, auto fit uh, to window all right and then we're gonna separate it tabs and that's how that one should look number four on page two to the right of um, places to play right here insert a footnote that says we will be adding more locations soon so under the reference tab you're gonna see a group here called um, footnotes and there's actually two different types of footnotes there's footnotes and there's endnotes all right footnotes go to the bottom of the current page that you have selected so right now I'm on page two so my footnote is going to go to the bottom of page two if I said insert endnote and I had a document with like five pages even if I was clicked on page two it's going to go to the bottom of page five all right hopefully that makes sense so I'm going to say insert footnote all right and I'm going to get this little thing right here and they're going to say hmm what do they want me to put in the footnote and sometimes they just want you to type something into the footnote sometimes they want you to copy and paste text and put it down here this says um just type places to play yep that's it and it's a capital P uh P just like that all right and there's no like you don't have to click out of the footnote it's not a footer um, it's a footnote all right you still have a footer in your document if you double click down here you still have a footer area in your document and we'll go through headers and footers a little bit later all right under the heading our motto at a closed chevron so right here I knew we were going to use this space for something um, so click below the space our motto under the heading our motto at a closed chevron process diagram so we went through smart art if you were with me in PowerPoint, we went through this and it doesn't change in Microsoft Word. It's under the insert tab and under illustrations, you're going to notice same stuff that we kind of introduced in PowerPoint 2019 test review. We have some new stuff in here like icons, 3D models and stuff like that. No longer do we have clip art. We now have smart art right here under illustrations. Actually, I think it was there before, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and it wants us to insert a piece of smart art called a closed chevron process so that word process tells me to go over here on the left and say process that way I'm not looking through hundreds of pieces of smart art it's probably not hundreds but I exaggerate and then um, I'm gonna click on process so that it basically just shows me the type of smart art that's called process and this one's called a closed chevron process I have no idea what that is so just start hovering over these things until you see closed chevron process if you were one of those people that used SmartArt a lot in Microsoft Word, you probably know exactly what this thing is. It's right there and what it looks like. All right. And uh, be careful when you insert SmartArt, just like in PowerPoint. See how it's uh, automatically like selected a little shape in here? 
when I um, select smart art, I never click inside of it. And if I have to do anything to the smart art, I click on the border of my smart art to make sure that I have all the smart art selected. If you ever have to add or remove shapes to smart art, then you want to click on this little arrow right here. And you can go ahead and press um, next to a bullet and press enter. Every time you add a bullet, you're going to add a shape. Every time you delete a bullet, you're going to delete a shape. All right, and that's just the basics of Smart Art. And we'll go through a little bit more um, with Smart Art um, a little bit later. So it wants us to say, from left to right, insert into the diagram, make friends, play safe, have fun. All right, make friends, play safe. And then have fun. Does the have fun have any exclamation point or anything like that? No? Okay. The old test did. It had have fun with an exclamation point after it. Actually, the F is not capitalized. Yep, there. Okay. Um, and that's it. And then once you click out of there or close your little uh, bullets, you're good to go with your smart art. Add the text hockey to the subject property of this document. This doesn't change either. We learned this in PowerPoint. Same thing for Word. So properties, you think File tab. And under uh, on the right-hand side, if you're adding properties, you're going to click Show All Properties, and they're all right here for you. If you're removing properties, you're going to say Check for Issues and Inspect Document. And just like always, wait, are we removing? No, we're adding. But just let's go over this anyway. When you remove properties, make sure everything is checked and inspect for everything. That way you can just remove what they want, all right? But if it's not checked, it's not going to inspect for that little thing, and you're not going to be able to remove it. So we'll talk more about that later. Properties, adding properties, file tab. We're going to say um, add the text hockey to the subject property. So under subject, there, we're going to type in hockey. And you don't have to save it. Once you click off, it's there forever. All right, until you well, until you delete it. I don't know about forever. Display the tab formatting um, symbols in the document. And this is a trick question. You're going to think to go, oh, that's right here under the Home tab. I, I know that I can display all the formatting symbols in the document right here. All right, and it's called Show Hide. And that's exactly what it does. Is it displays all the formatting symbols. That's not what the question is asking you to do, though, Mary. It's asking to display only the tab formatting symbols. So display the tab formatting symbols in the document. So we're going to go to the File tab, and we're going to go down here to Options. All right, all the way down here to the bottom. I can barely click on it because my window is in the way. And then we're going to go to the Display Options, and you're going to say Always show these formatting marks, and you're going to see just tab characters right there. Notice how I have Object Anchors selected. The question says, display the tab formatting symbols in the document. It doesn't say to uncheck anything else, all right? And most of the time in the question, it'll just say, like, accept all other default settings, all right? I always say, if it doesn't say to do it, then don't do it. So I'm just going to leave this checked, object anchors. If it said display only the tab characters in the document, then I would say, whoop, then just tab characters. And then I would say, okay, all right? Oh, see, I don't have permission to do it anyway. Poop. You might not either. I don't know. It depends. Oh. Oh. Maybe it's because of my OneDrive location? Weird. I bet if I save this to my desktop, it'll be fine. Those of you who have this saved to your desktop, I bet it'll be fine. All right, so properties. There you go. Line spacing to 1.4 for the entire document. When it says entire document, hold Control on your keyboard and select A. All right, and here under the paragraph group, you're going to see line spacing. They want it to be 1.4, so we're going to have to go to line spacing options. And under the spacing group, we're going to type in 1.4 just right here. Oh, sorry. All right, and then you can check it. Go back into line spacing options. Oop, what happened? There. Weird. Well, it, I mean, it changed it. I don't know why I can't see it. 
Yeah, I mean, it still saved it. Weird. I don't know why it's not there when I go back into it. And you can kind of see the whole document. What do I have now? Do I still have two pages or three pages now? Well, I still have two. Almost three. All right. Check the document for... Okay, this is tricky. Check the document for accessibility issues. This is number nine. Check the document for accessibility issues. Correct the missing alternative text-related issue. Report the inspection results by using the first recommended action. Do not fix any other issues. All right, so check this out. Under the File tab, I don't think we've ever gone through this in any of my reviews. Under Check for Issues, you're going to see Check Accessibility. All right, same place where you would inspect and remove properties. You're going to see Check Accessibility. All right, and you're going to get a little pop-up window right here. Yeah, we got it. Um, here, that's going to give you a list of errors. All right, and if you read the question, it says correct the missing alternative text related issues so check this out I have missing alternative text and it says three issues and if I click on them it'll actually say like picture 8 doesn't have alternative text picture 5 doesn't picture 8 uh, picture 2 doesn't all right it says um, by using the first recommended action do not fix any other um, reported issues all right so if you read the recommended action, it says right click on the object and select edit all text. And then it actually does say how to actually solve the problem. Now, um, on your test, I, do, I don't believe it's going to be alt text and it's going to be some other issue. Um, but if you click on it, it'll say how to fix it down here. And literally, that's all you have to do is follow the directions. And sometimes it's as easy as just deleting a paragraph. This one wants us to right click, edit alt text. And I wasn't real specific in the question. So let's just go ahead and say um, Contoso for the alt text. All right. Same thing for picture five. It says I'm going to right click. I'm going to say edit alt text. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the word Contoso. And notice how as I'm doing this, my problems are going away over here and that's what you want uh, to do as well all right and when they're all gone <clears throat> you know you're gonna get that question correct hopefully that makes sense but basically what you're doing is you're just correcting errors on your document all right at the bottom of the document uh, not specific very not specific we have a little space here use the 3d model features to insert a triceratops model from the 3d objects online folder all right so we went through this in PowerPoint in fact I think this is the same question but under 3d models you do have a little online um, gallery that we can look through Galleria and we can just kind of look through Triceratops or something like that or just type in dinosaur it doesn't matter I'm gonna take literally the first one I can get if it'll insert it for me sometimes you're blocked uh, because these things are copywritten so if it says like error, just try again. This might be super huge, and then we're gonna. Um, nope, it's not. All right. So right there, insert a little triceratops, and um, that's it for this little practice project, guys. That's problem. That's questions one through ten, and there are how many that we have to go through here? Well, there's quite a few. I don't know how many. Fifty-five questions in Microsoft Word, and we have a lot to touch on still. This is just the beginning. Alright, this is the beginning. Here you go.